हेलो फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग इन दिस लेक्चर दिस इज द सेकंड लेक्चर ऑफ सॉल्यूशन वी विल सी रॉल्स लॉ एंड रिलेटेड लिक्विड लिक्विड सॉल्यूशन ओके नाउ व्हाट इज रॉल्स लॉ बिफोर स्टार्टिंग एक्चुअल रॉल्स लॉ we are going to study the solutions of type liquid in liquid solute is liquid and solvent is also liquid 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 type of solution again depending on their nature there are three types of liquid liquid solutions one type is the completely miscible miscible liquid pairs partially liquid miscible liquid pairs and completely immiscible completely immiscible liquid pairs completely miscible liquid pairs partially miscible liquid pairs and third type is the immiscible liquid pair if we consider a example completely liquid miscible means a example of acetone and water acetone and water <coughs> these two liquids are completely miscible with each other in any proportion partially miscible liquid pairs uh, example is the phenol and water simple example is the phenol and water in small extent phenol is soluble miscible in water but after that there is a separation of layers two layers are formed we will see <coughs> later on what happens if we consider phenol water system and completely immiscible liquid pair for example water and benzene immiscible liquid pair <clears throat> now if we consider the rolls law rolls law it is related with the vapor pressure now what is mean by vapor pressure first of all if we consider simple example let us have a any type of liquid present uh, taken in a container <clears throat> and if this container is containing water or any liquid substance and if we put it under a jar and evacuate it all air is removed now what happens at a given temperature what are the molecules present at the surface level molecules present at the surface level of that particular liquid try to escape from this liquid state as go goes into the vapor state molecules at the surface try to escape and go in the vapor state we call it as a evaporation but evaporated molecule has again tendency to go in the liquid state we call it as a condensation initially rate of evaporation rate of evaporation is very high 
while rate of condensation is low. And after some time, both rate becomes equal. Now, under this condition, when the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation become equal, under these conditions, the vapors present over this liquid exert certain pressure on that liquid. And that pressure exerted is called as a vapor pressure. Okay. Got it? What is meant by vapor pressure? It is the pressure exerted by the vapors on liquid in equilibrium with liquid. These vapors are in equilibrium with liquid. This is called as the vapor pressure. If here we are taking a pure substance, the vapor pressure called as a P0 or can be written as like P0. Vapor pressure, anything. It is the vapor pressure of pure substance, P0, in pure state. If we take mixture of two substances, suppose we consider it is the mixture of acetone and water, or ethyl alcohol and water, then what happens? The vapor contains acetone molecules also, and water molecules also. Yes, in vapor both the liquids are present. Also, both the molecules are present in liquid state. Both the molecules are present in vapor state. Now what happens here? Pressure, vapor pressure. Here it is, we call it as a total vapor pressure. It is called as a total vapor pressure. Now, here pressure exerted by any one of the constituent from the total vapor pressure, from the total vapor pressure, any of the substance exerts some pressure. Suppose it is the mixture of two substances A and B. Then from the total pressure, some pressure is due to molecules of A some pressure is due to molecules of B. That some pressure, that part of the pressure called as a partial vapor pressure. It is called as a partial vapor pressure. Okay. PA plus PB. Total vapor pressure is equal to partial vapor pressure of a and partial vapor pressure of B. Partial vapor pressure means part from the total vapor pressure. Total vapor pressure is equal to partial vapor pressure of A plus partial vapor pressure of B. Now, actual Rolle's law states that the partial vapor pressure of any volatile component of solution. Suppose there is a solution of A and B. Suppose in that solution, n a number of moles of A are present and n b with the number of moles of B constituent. Got it? We are taking a mixture, binary solution. Solution of A and B. Mixture of A and B. We are considering completely miscible liquids. In that completely liquid, miscible liquid pair, a and B. Suppose N A be the number of moles of A and N B be the number of moles of B. And if P A is the partial vapor pressure of A and P B be the partial vapor pressure of B, then according to Rolle's law, partial vapor pressure of any volatile component, suppose both these are volatile. <coughs> Partial vapor pressure of any volatile component or of any, any volatile substance in the solution is directly proportional to mole fraction. It is directly proportional to mole fraction. Means Pa is directly proportional to Xa. 
and PB is directly proportional to XB. And this proportionality constant PA is equal to P naught A into XB. And PB is equal to P naught B into XB. What is P naught A and P naught B? These are the vapor pressure in their pure state. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now you can change the statement according to this equation also. You can state this equation. Partial vapor pressure of any volatile constituent. Partial vapor pressure of any volatile constituent of a solution is equal to the product of vapor pressure of pure component and mole fraction of component in the solution. Partial pressure, uh, partial vapor pressure of any volatile component is equal to or it is the product of vapor pressure in pure state and mole fraction at a given temperature mind well because temperature affects on the vapor pressure as temperature increases vapor pressure also increases this is the actual Rolle's law means pa or partial vapor pressure of any volatile constituent is the or it is equal to the product of vapor pressure in its pure state p not a and the mole fraction of that particular constituent p not a into x a similarly p b is equal to p not b into x b and total pressure total pressure p t is equal to P A plus P B. Sum of partial pressures. Total vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the sum of partial vapor pressure. It is also called as Dalton's law of partial pressure. It is also called as a Dalton's law. It is also called as a Dalton's law of partial vapor pressure means Pt is equal to P naught A X A plus P naught B X B. Yes, but this is applicable only for ideal solution. Now, what is meant by ideal solution? That is the definition of ideal solution. The solution which obeys Rolle's law. Solution which obeys Rolle's law, this Rolle's law, at any temperature is known as ideal solution. Solution which obeys Rolle's law at any solution at all temperature and concentration he is known as ideal solution hmm? then what is non ideal solution which do not obey this law called as a non ideal solution as like ideal gas which obeys all gas laws at all temperature pressure or uh, are known as ideal gases similarly what is ideal solution it is the solution which obeys Rolle's law at all concentration and temperature called ideal solution and non-ideal which do not obey the Rolle's law. In actual practice all solutions are not ideal solutions we call it as a non-ideal solution. As like gases none of the gas is ideal gas. But some gases tends to behave ideally. Here also some solutions try to behave ideally, tend to behave ideally. Hmm? 
now we will see what is the difference distinguished points between ideal and non ideal solution first distinguishing point already we have seen which obeys rolls law at all temperature and concentration called as ideal solution and what is non ideal solution which do not obey which the solution which does not obey rolls law at all concentration and temperature called as non ideal solution okay second distinguishing point if we consider ideal solution <coughs> then solution of uh, li liquid a is mixed with liquid b during that mixing there is no evolution of heat enthalpy of solution is zero enthalpy of mixing is zero such solutions are called as ideal solution but if enthalpy of solution is not equal to zero heat may be evolved or absorbed during mixing that solution is non ideal solution okay next distinguishing point between ideal and non ideal solution here volume of a plus volume of b is exactly equal to the total volume means if we mix 10 ml of a and 10 ml of b the mixture is exactly 20 ml but this is not happening in case of non ideal solution va plus vb not equal to vt total volume if we mix 10 ml of a and 10 ml of b total volume is not 20 ml then it is a non ideal solution if the total volume is the same as that of individual volume sum of individual volumes then it is a ideal solution <coughs> next distinguishing point between ideal and non ideal solution <coughs> is that in case of here in case of ideal solution total pressure is equal to the sum of partial pressures this law dalton's law is again verified by ideal solution but in case of non ideal solution pt not equal to pa plus pb there is a deviation from ideality either may be less or greater here also may be less or greater here also heat may be absorbed or evolved depends on the type of liquid pairs but in case of ideal solution total pressure is the sum of partial pressures total volume is the sum of individual volumes enthalpy of mixing is zero okay next example next distinguishing point here is the attraction the intermolecular attraction intermolecular attraction is exactly equal to intramolecular attraction <coughs> intermolecular attraction is equal to intramolecular attraction means if we consider a solution of or mixture of a and b a solution uh, solution uh, not solution pure a contains number of a molecules there are large number of a molecules and there is a attraction between a and e similarly solution b contains uh, pure liquid b contains large number of b molecules there is a attraction between this b and b molecule whatever may be the attraction between attractive force between a and a is same as that of b and b and same as that of a and a, a and b this attractive force is called as a intermolecular attra intramolecular attractive force this is a inter intramolecular attractive force and this is a intermolecular between two different molecules 
attractive force between two different molecules is the intermolecular attraction between same molecules is the intermolecular these all attractions hmm, here attraction between a and a b and b is same as that of a and b all attractive forces are same but here attractive forces are not equal a and a b and b a and b these attractive forces are not same here all forces are same hmm? generally example of this ideal solution generally closely related liquid pairs for example benzene and toluene benzene plus toluene closely related liquid pairs try to behave ideally and almost all solutions ethyl alcohol and water okay acetone water they behave non ideally okay now if we consider a graph or a graphical representation of this uh, ideal solution suppose uh, just wait <coughs> here we are considering the vapor pressure composition diagram <coughs> along this axis we are considering or we are plotting vapor pressure and along here we are plotting mole fraction x mole fraction okay suppose here 100 percent of a and here 100 percent of b now here 100 percent of a means along this curve concentration of along this direction concentration of b increases and along this direction concentration of a increases here zero percent a here zero percent b means if we consider pure a here pure a yes we are considering a pure a now what is the vapor pressure of pure a we'll suppose it this is the vapor pressure of pure a say p naught a and according to Rolle's law as we go on adding b in it suppose we are taking a solution pure a it is a vapor pressure of pure A, P naught A. If we add B in it, what happens? Mole fraction of A decreases. As we add, go on adding B, mole fraction of A goes on decreasing. And similarly, the pressure also goes on decreasing. This is the partial pressure of A. Here, a is 0 means partial pressure will be 0. As we go on adding more and more A, partial pressure goes on increasing. And this is the partial pressure of pure A. Here, partial pressure of pure B is 0. Partial pressure of B is 0 because we have a pure A. Uh, on going adding B, 
Pressure increases. This is the partial pressure. This is the pure vapor pressure of B. P naught B. P naught A. Here we have only A. Pure A. Due to which partial pressure of B will be zero. This is PB. Curve of PB. We know this equation. PA proportional to XA. Here XA is zero. Uh, XB is zero. As we go on adding B, the total pressure, uh, partial pressure goes on increasing. These are the straight lines. Okay, for partial pressure. And if we plot the total pressure, the graph will be as like this. This will be straight line. Okay, here PT is equal to PA plus PB. This is in case of ideal solution. For ideal solution, every time this PB plus PA is equal to PT. At any point, if we plot such graph on a particular graph paper, if we can see the sum of partial pressures PB plus PA is equal to PT. Exactly the sum of these two will give this value. At any point, this is in case of ideal solution only. Means, if we plot the PA against XA, the graph will be as like this, and PB against XB, the graph will be as like this. But this is in case of ideal solution. And for non-ideal solution, total vapor pressure is not equal to the partial vapor pressure, sum of partial vapor pressures. And depending on these, there are three types of solutions, deviations for non-ideal solution. What are these three types? First type, total pressure should be sum of partial pressures. This is the ideal condition. We can say a P naught A, here P naught B, P naught A means here X A is equal to 1, mole fraction of A is 1 means 100% A, here X B is equal to 1, in this direction X B increases, and in this direction X A increases, here X B equal to 0, here x a is equal to 0. Now, this is in case of ideal solution. What happens depending on the non-ideal solution, depending on the change in vapor pressure, there are three types of non-ideal solutions. First type is the solution which shows small positive or negative deviation. Positive deviation means there is a small increase in vapor pressure. In actual practice, in actual practice, there is a small change in vapor pressure, small increase in vapor pressure. Just a minute. Okay, got it. If there is a small deviation, positive or negative, maybe positive or negative deviation, means total vapor pressure is slightly more or slightly less than the ideal one. It, that is the first type of solution, which shows small deviation, small positive or negative deviation. 
we call it as a type 1 solution type 1 solution type 1 non ideal solution means which shows small positive or negative deviation type 2 solution means which shows large positive deviation and type 3 means which shows large negative deviation from the ideal behavior means depending on the deviation there are three types of solutions type 1 small positive or negative deviation but here total pressure non ideal total pressure is in between pa and pb in between means it is less than pa and greater than not less than pa and greater than pb every time but type 2 solution is which shows large positive deviation some at some point at some point the vapor pressures becomes equal to the or becomes more than each of the pressures and type 3 is the large negative deviation here vapor pressure sometimes what happens vapor pressure becomes less than the vapor pressure of pure constituent that's why it is the solution of third type which was large negative deviation okay got it okay thank you thank you very much